I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man is suck. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co host, Josh Ricardo. What's yes. up, dude? Yes, Edward. Yes, we're back. We're it's been a while. It. I haven't yeah, seen you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. How's life? No, things are good. Things are good. <laughs> 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 we're recording out of order. I don't know. <laughs> right before this, we were like, uh, okay, we so had it's, the whole talk it's this day, and I'm just like, I haven't seen it. you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're like right out of the gate. You blew it. <laughs> I blew it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say though, the Jeep story. A lot of people love the Jeep story. Uh, so if you haven't caught up, uh, go check it out. If you haven't listened to the last episode, also there are clips out there. Clips. There's some good clips rolling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we had uh, we had some good stuff. There's some good stuff happening. I've had about five business phone calls about my 2024, and that was fun. You say that in, uh, almost ironically or sarcastically. No, I <laughs> Business phone calls, like I, I just—I always listen to our shows uh, before we record them. I just listen to all the, you know, especially when I clean, I listen to our shows. Uh-huh. And while I was listening to the New Year's resolution one, so I'm not gonna come in here and be negative. Negative. Yeah. Okay. Good. Cool. Anything talking about my career with other people where they're interested is a positive. Yeah. So, but it was definitely a, there's a lot of work to be done. I'll leave it at that. Business phone calls. Hey, listen, that's, they're better than not having business phone calls. I guess, yeah, you, yeah. I guess that is business, accurate. Yeah. Business phone calls are good. Yeah. Have you ever had a feeling of not wanting to do anything? Like, I think I have a, <laughs> yes. I think I daily. Have, this is new to me. I've never been idle. I'm a lazy person, but I'm not an idle uh-huh. person. I, I don't even know you can call it lazy. I, it, I would uh, probably classify it more as like, I don't, if I don't want to do something, I figure out a way not to do it. And, oh. and I do something else. You actually spend more effort not doing not it than doing, doing it. But doing something completely different than what I was supposed to be doing. It's uh-huh. been like a problem my whole life. Now, okay. I'm a lot better at it now. But what I've noticed is that I have a exhaustion that I've never felt before. And it must be being a dad and all the other stuff. But I used to be able to do a lot more in a day and get a lot more done in a day and be motivated. This is my 2024 ma- mantra. I'm not doing it. That That's the mantra. Ooh, that's a good one. Not doing it. That's a good one. Not doing it. Yeah. I'm going to leave it in the universe's hands. If you believe in God, I'm putting it in God's hands. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm going to keep working hard, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I'm out. Yeah, that's good. I think that's a good, I think that's a healthy thing. Just focus on what you want to focus on. And it reminded me of when I was a huge fan of the San Diego Chargers and how they would really affect my day when they would lose a game bro with the eagles right now dude uh, i was that's why i brought it up dude um i can't even what so they this, just did in the final week of the season oh that was a tro- why even put the guys out there why even try to win the game then well i mean the thinking is they're gonna win the east no 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 no, no. the thinking is you've lost Four of the last five games. Oh, and you want to get them to a place where they feel comfortable going into the, the playoffs. You, I hear you, that. You want a, just a cohesive outing. Yeah. Uh, which just turned into a disaster. I said it to you off air, and I stand by it. Fat Dom ruined your season. Yeah. Fat Dom. That's a crazy, that's a crazy take, and, and it's he so it. on point, dude. He, it was down. They were playing San Francisco so tough up until that point. They were, it was a brawl. They were going back and forth. It was everything you wanted that game to be yeah, between those two teams. And then the minute he poked that player, you're like, sorry, buddy. <laughs> you're the lo- now you guys are the scum of the earth. Would you say uh, before, because you said this earlier, you, you oh, I've had a lot of uncles that intervened <laughs> in my life and ruined it. <laughs> had a lot of Italian uncles that intervened and ruined a good thing for me. <laughs> and Fat Dom just ruined your fucking eagle season. That's so good. That's so fucking accurate. You just don't have a non-player come in and a f- 
Because it's like, you're not in this. The It was like having somebody's dad from the bleachers come out. Yeah. Yeah. It. I, I didn't... I don't understand even... Like, I, I get it. He's been there since Andy Reid and, like, the players like him and stuff like that. But why does a... He's a he's a mascot, does, then. Why does a... Yeah, right. Like, why does a security Can guard... Can you imagine if... Remember when Cuba Gooden played the retarded guy radio? No. What? <laughs> you never remember that movie, Radio? <laughs> and Cuba Gooden played the retarded on guy? A, it's based on a true story Okay. where this retarded guy, I think he's, like, the he's the local guy, uh-huh. and he loves radio, so they call him Radio, and I'm... I haven't seen the movie in a while, but I'm pretty sure he's like a part of the some team, like the high school team or something. Oh, okay. And it's just like that. Like there's a number of guys across the league that are slow adults <laughs> that work for the team for like 40 years, <laughs> Dude, and their whole life's the team. The, all of South. He, they're Philly. not. All, they're, I really. This is gonna. This is what we need to go viral. Like South Philly's just gonna come fucking gunning <laughs> for you, dude. <laughs> Yo, don't talk shit about Dom. I'm not. Hey, but <laughs> selling, they should know. They're selling Dom merchandise. Dom outside ruined the, your season. Yeah, and I hate I to say right. that as a fellow Italian, but the minute right. you don't see them, I get that if he's an inspirational guy, he's the dude that glues the team together. He's security. I get that. I'm all for that. But obviously, he thinks he's more than he is to do what he did, and I think it ruined your season. Well, my point is, the slow adult guys. Every team has like a guy that has been there and dedicated his whole weird autism right, life yeah, to the yeah, team. Right. Yeah, I'm not yeah. saying Fat Dom is this because obviously he's not because he thought he was more than that. You never see those guys poke another player in the chest. Can you imagine that? That's wild. Some guy folding towels comes out from the fucking uh, locker room. He wants to fight a player. It was crazy. That's it was nuts. crazy when it went down. I was like, what's happening right now? Him getting involved ruined your season. That's all I'm saying. I bet you I bet you you're not wrong, too. I bet you there was a, uh, like a break in the locker room from it. You know what I mean? Like it, uh, it, it, and then you it's have a AJ Brown. AJ Brown's causing problems. He's not getting the rock. He's he, there's but I'll, but I'll say this, dysentery. Uh, just back to the Dom thing, though, because you have to wonder, like, if you're a player, you always have to side with players. You know what I mean? No, regardless, like, right? There's there's teammates. Mm-hmm. Then the hierarchy is like teammates, right? Like linemen, right? It's probably the, the greatest bond. Yes. Right? And then, like, yes. just the rest of the team. And then it's just NFL players. Yeah. And then it's people that are not players. Yeah. Right? Like, like a Dom. There's, a, like, there's so, a very clear line. So there's, like, a break there where if you're siding with Dom, you're, like, actually going against with, like... Another NFL player. player. Yeah. yeah, right. I mean, I think, honestly, it didn't seem that big of a deal when it happened. But I'm pretty sure you guys have lost five out of six since it happened. Yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> Yeah. So now it's a big deal. Yeah. Everybody it, listening to this is already like the season's been over, dude. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but this they're is what we beat, ta- hey, They're not going to beat the Bucks. There's no way. The way sh- they're fucking playing right now, dude. The fucking I, Bucks are. You should beat the Bucks. I don't know, man. Fucking Bucks look Bakers real can, rough against Carolina, too. They're going to light up the fucking Eagles secondary. I hope they win, man. Listen, yeah. I hope we, and I hope we go. You don't, play, you don't have faith. I'm just so just I'm so burnt. You're so mad. But that's just, my point. I remember going to the j- shitty job on a Monday after the Chargers blew, because Chargers are, they don't get the, cr- they don't get the national uh, credit for this. But to me, more so than the Browns, more so than any other pro team that has like the "woe is me" attached to them, the Chargers have had more heartbreaking losses. Oh, is that true? Holy roller! That's against the Chargers. 06 were the best team in the league with the best record. Uh, two major, inc- like, awful plays happened, blunders that you could never think of ever happening in the history of the game. And those moments and situations happen. So they get beat by the, the Patriots to go to the AFC champ. It's just like they have done, in addition to that, a number of regular season snafus. Even this year, I'm not a Chargers fan anymore, but even this year they did it. My point is that's like the greatest working class thing. To love a team. Oh. To love a sports team. Sure. Where you're not fucking your wife that week because you're mad that they lost. So you, it, it depresses you because your team can't get it together. I mean, that's what I loved about having Scope on. It was like, he oh. is affected. 
Oh. By the Mets. Oh, and totally. that's how I was affected by the Chargers. So I thought of you. Oh, dude. I've been I've been coming a, in today. Dude, I've been a wreck for like weeks now, dude. Like I used to affect my mood. I moods. can't I can't even I can't like I'm walking around like Tuesday. I'm like, I can't believe I'm still thinking about this yeah. fucking Eagles team. And they don't pay your rent. In the words of Bronx Tail, Sonny says to see, go to Mickey Mantle, tell me you can't pay your rent, see what he says. I mean, that's the truth of yeah, the matter. Right, yeah, right, right, right. But meanwhile, you know, you got guys with their hard hats and their lunch pails and all like oh, yeah. the Yankee pride yeah, yeah, and all yeah, the yeah. Phillies. And- well, here's this, though. I mean, sports and it, even, you know, it's so wild, too, because like it's become even more so now because you don't watch anything on TV really live anymore. The only thing that it's really yeah. has a live like appeal, that live that feel like even when I'm watching on DVR and I know my neighbors like watching a game. He's already ahead of me by like five minutes. Sure, you know yeah. what I mean? I feel like off. I'm like, I'm like, well, hurry, you, up, you, catch hurry up, hurry up, get to the yeah. commercial break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so, you I, fast so I can catch up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. But like, there's something about watching a game live. So yeah. that like, and when my phone buzzes and I know I'm behind on a game, I'm you just like, I can't, I can't, I can't yeah. touch my phone. Well, so the Bills won, dude. That was the AFC East, huge, and they had like. Well, 50,000, 30,000 people show up at the airport at like midnight oh. to see their plane come in. Oh, right on, man. I mean, But that's the thing. Is yeah. it right on? I don't know. Because my wife's family are Bills fans, yeah. and that whole area is so dedicated to yeah. the Bills, like diehard yeah. Bills fans. And I love it, but then I think about, I mean, I, I got to go to work Monday morning. <laughs> right. And I've been, I've been out all night waiting at an airport game, to watch millionaires yeah, get yeah, off yeah. of a plane. Watching millionaires... <laughs> D plane. <laughs> and why am I an asshole for feeling that? Like yeah. other fans, are like, well, you're not a real fan. Like, and I said to I said to my wife, I go, it works because but she, cause she goes, Well, you know, if you told your boss that you're gonna be late because you they probably would be okay with it in Buffalo. Right. Yeah, but that works because the whole city's involved. Right. The whole city's a working class city. That's why it is better to go to live events and to be a part of a team that's a working class city. It just is. Oh. It's better to be a Phillies fan. It's better to be Steelers, a Bills fan. It's Bills. better to be a Steelers yeah, fan. Yeah, yeah. It just is. It's just better. Yeah. Because the whole connection is the city. It's not the... So this leads me to uh, what I was thinking about driving over. So what is... All right. So what is the most working class football team? It's not the Eagles. They've had no. way too much success. Not it, the Eagles. It's the Steelers, even though they've had success. They... They've only had what about one the, owner. What about uh, and, f- and like f- seven what about total Green coaches? Bay? Okay, so Wisconsin to me, I think or, of or farm the, or the Lions. What about the Lions? Oh, the okay, Lions. okay, okay. So here's my let's okay. let's go over criteria. Okay, so for me, a working class city, it has to be a city. Yeah, it can't be like Wisconsin's in the middle of fucking nowhere. Right. There's there's not a city no. there. Green Bay. Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah, so if you nice. can't score crack. Right. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the gauge. Yeah, if you yeah. can't score crack easily, yeah, yeah, yeah. then it's not a working class city. No. Right. So Detroit is up there. They might be number one. I think Pittsburgh takes it because of they wear it. They per- wear it. Pittsburgh is the first one that comes to mind for me as well. Yeah. But just because. They wear it. Yeah. And it's like and a And the guys town. that play there, they end up looking like a guy that would live there. Yeah. Right. I, I don't remember anyone being handsome on the Steelers. There was right. no, like, and anyone Detroit, they've ever had a star. Detroit is a bigger city than Pittsburgh, too. Like, it is. Detroit's, like, more of a metropolitan And I've been to of. both, and Detroit is a cool city. You know, they're not dying for, like, mm-hmm. entertainment. Or, Pittsburgh's an awesome now city, what too, about, what it's about, a sleeper city. What about, Cle- like, Cleveland Browns? Oh, yeah, that's good. But see, they have a new stadium, a newer stadium. Okay. They have a great infrastructure. Have they ever won, connect- have they ever won a Super Bowl? But it's not about winning because okay. Pittsburgh's won, what, six, okay. five or six okay. or whatever. So I think it's the Steelers. I think it's the Steelers. They, okay. they still play in the same area. There's nothing that's been upgraded really. I mean, I don't know. Colts? Maybe, no. no. Indoor. Yeah. Indoor, and, they, they and been, it's like a farm situation. Yeah, okay, no, yeah. And Buffalo might be it. Buffalo, Buffalo, is, Buffalo. Yeah. I think Buffalo takes it. I think it's Buffalo over Pittsburgh because they've had more heartbreak, mm-hmm. and they've had success. Yeah. And the success Buff, is bitter. Buffalo, might, Buffalo wins. I think you're Buffalo just because of the just the and I think kicking it dra- the teeth. Like it the draws four, them together. Four years, it draws them Bowls. together. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. To to lose four in a row because you feel. 
the enjoyment of going to the first one and you think it's ah, going to happen. Dude, the fourth? Then you feel the enjoyment of the fan going to the second one. Ugh. But by the third one, <laughs> you're kind of, ho- I mean, you want them to get in, but you're like, again? <laughs> That's got to be insane. And by the fourth one, you yeah. might be on suicide watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a fan. Yeah. Yeah, that's got to just be. Oh, oh, I can't even. Because I think, I think only two were relatively close. The rest were blowouts. I don't remember. The first one was the closest, and then the other three. I think one of them looked close, and then it just it went. It got ugly. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. I, I just remember Jim Kelly was a quarterback. That's all. That's all. Yeah, I but it, I think yeah. Buffalo wins. Yeah, yeah. Buffalo is the yeah. most, most working, working class. class NFL team. Okay. All right. I like this game though. What's Good more game. Wor- what's more working class? Uh, all right. <laughs> and no one's handsome on Buffalo either. All right. All right. Here we go. You're a shoe guy. What's more working class? Uh, a Nike or Adidas? Oh, Adidas. Adidas. For sure. Well, right? okay. Adidas Nike has some, has Na- some like clout though. Na- well, it depends what era we're talking about, right? I think more people, I don't think... <sighs> I don't think hip hop culture can be working class because it's already tied to hip hop. So, like, I'm a Jordans guy. That's all I wear. Retro Jordans. I don't. So, th- yeah, no, I'm thinking. Okay, my dad would never be caught in a pair of Jordans. But there's working classes uh, beyond. Uh, you know, it, it's it's a broad thing. Uh, so, but, you but we're think talking about, about buying your kids. So a working class guy works at the fucking mill, regardless of where he grows up, a color, race, anything like that. What's he buying his son and thinking he can get away with it? It's the Adidas, right? No, I think it's still Nike. He's got to be Nike. It's Nike, but it's not Jordans. Right. Oh, okay. It's Nike. It's Nike. Okay. Because Nike, if you look around, is still the dominant Okay. The dominant brand. Right, maybe that wasn't a good one. What, okay, what do we got? Another one. What do you got? Another one. What's more working class? Oh, uh, what's more working class? Outback Steakhouse or Red Lobster? Ooh, this good one, good. right? This is fantastic. Because for me, damn. it's Outback Steakhouse. That was where okay, our big I, nights were. I gotta go. First off, I gotta go. What do I prefer? I prefer. I think I go Bloomin' Onion. <laughs> Well, the, the I dad, love, don't, I love don't sleep on that bread at Red Lobster, that <laughs> cheesy bread. I mean. It's true. That is some legit shit. And they got like an all you can eat, too, at oh, Red Lobster. Oh, you can go in. You can go, because they get all that frozen lobster and yeah. they do it up. And they got I, that big vat of yeah, it's just the all butter. butter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you just pour that over everything. Oh, I, that's, oh. I, I, okay. Red Lobster. Because I look yeah. at it as, oh, you, um, someone's birthday. A big, but a yeah. big birthday, yeah, not yeah. like not like fifteen years old. Like you're twenty one. Plus, I'll Are say you this too. 50th wedding anniversary, and that Australian accent that auto- automatically <laughs> fuck out back. No, we <laughs> red lobster. <laughs> Oi, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> I love how that's a you're a foreigner. <laughs> I don't care if you're still a white. Go foreigner. back to fucking Australia, <laughs> fuck. But we had an outback near us. Uh huh. And that was the place to go. Mm-hmm. But Red Lobster was considered more fancy to us than Outback. I agree. I it agree. It was considered because it had lobster in the yeah, title. Totally. More fancy. It's a, Well, here's the thing. You can get you can go to Outback and have a cheaper meal. You can just go get a burger. Sure. sure. Red Lobster, yeah. you're going to drop a little more regardless of what you order. <laughs> I once uh, went on a date with this girl that worked at Outback. And uh, this is like in my, my 20s. <laughs> And she lived in like a deeper part of Jersey. Uh-huh. And we had been out a couple times and she really wanted me to come to her instead of the city. Mm-hmm. And I was like, uh, okay. And she goes, meet me off the New Jersey transit stop. I forgot what it was and I'll pick you up. And she goes, do you want to go into my job and eat? I get a discount. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And I remember her talking about Outback. You ever seen What's Eating Gilbert Grape? Well, That's she, the one with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah, kid. it's his first yeah. like Oscar uh-huh. nomination. Yeah. He plays a slow dog. Yeah, huge mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But John C. Riley's in it. And John C. Riley, he's amazing in it, and his character is obsessed with Burger Barn, which is a, like a already constructed 
fast food restaurant they're putting in in the little town, and all through the whole movie, he just talks about <laughs> the, how excited like, he is. What they're using the fries, canola oil it makes a crispier <laughs> fry. He is into it. <laughs> that's so good. And that's how this woman was with Outback. And uh-huh. I remember sitting there and her telling me about every facet of this cookie cutter establishment. Right. Like it, like she worked it per se, like just the way she was laying it out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and for a second, I was like, "Oh, that's kind of endearing." And then after a while, I was like, "Oh, you're a f- delusional person." Yeah, yeah, yeah right. And right. then all of her friends stared at us while we ate, the workers. Oh, so I don't know if she was taking me there to be like, "This is my show date, off a little bit." I guess. Yeah, it's always weird. I because I but is go- that a place you show off? I guess is Outback if you're working class. Maybe that's the move. Well. I'll say and the this. discount. And I'll the discount this. is no joke. Going to your restaurant to sit and eat is a big show. It's a show, right? It's okay, that's what I thought. It's a big show. Like, because you go in, you're like, everybody else is working, and you're sitting back kicking your feet up. Yeah. I'll have another margarita. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, all yeah, her, yeah. And her fr- like, different people waited on us. We uh-huh. must have had five different people oh, yeah, serve us. Because everyone around. wanted to talk to her and right. meet me. Yeah, yeah. And we weren't by no means, I mean, serious. It was like a kink relationship. It wasn't like a. Uh, we could be dating soon. I mean, it was right. like a, it was a fuck relationship. Right. And well, that's probably another part of the show for her too. I'm sure. I'm if sure. It, if it's like, I'm a, sure she's told them about a, stuff yeah, we did and like, uh-huh. oh, this is the guy I'm doing it kind of thing. Right. Uh, but I just remember that being like, it reminded me now that I know you and you're so entwined with the weight staff industry. You're right. That's a big deal. You're so closely entwined with those people while you work there. Yeah. It's one of those jobs where you know everybody's business. Oh, you, know. you drink with them. Everything. You party with them. Yeah. They're like family. It's yeah. unlike any other job. It's so weird. Whenever I would um, have like somebody, like if, if a waitress, waitress came in on her day off and sat down and ate and I had to wait on her, I didn't know how to do it. Because you thought this person to be judging you. No, 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 no. Because like when, I'm do, when I was doing, because I was early on in my week like i just i have my like routine and today we have for this and would you like super salad and i'm doing it's a rhythm right especially when you're new like you go outside the rhythm you're gonna forget shit and i'm doing all that stuff with uh this stoned waitress and she's like what's wrong with you it's inorganic (laughs) like i don't know (laughs) i don't want to do this can somebody else wait on her <laughs> She's like, you're so weird right now. And I'm like, yes. I mean, I, what do you want me to be, your bro? I'm, I'm like, trying, I don't I'm know working. how to do. I don't know how to do this. I was a busboy six months ago. <laughs> did you learn how to? Did you learn how to do that eventually? Because I'm I, sure you had family and friends come in. All my because my sister is always my sister is in the yeah, service yeah, yeah. industry, and she always has. As I got older, yeah. I mean, I was like uh, like a 19 year old kid, so I didn't really know. I yeah, just remember sense. being very awkward. With like the way, because the other thing is like, I was the bus boy and I was like, all these hot waitresses. Yeah. Be like, hey, Eddie. Yeah, and you yeah, know, yeah. and I was just like, you know, I didn't have to say anything. I was yeah. just like this stoned kid. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever bring a date in that wasn't like a potential girlfriend to any of your wait staff jobs? No. You just don't do it, right? No. That's what I thought. No, I would never do that. So that definitely was like a show. She the only time on I show. ever did that was when I took Gina. I don't think we were married yet. Maybe we were just married, but we we stopped by that restaurant in. But you were already done waiting tables at that point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was waiting tables. We stopped at that that uh, old colonial restaurant. Well, the one you had to wear the shit. Yeah, she was like, "I want to go to that colonial restaurant." I was like, oh, "I don't want to." go. She's like, "Come on, I want to see." I was like, "Fine." <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. She made you put on the old outfit. She was like, she, yeah. She was like, can you? Do they have any? Yeah, right. Any like, in the back? I'm like, fine. <laughs> Come out. She's just laughing at me. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so yes, Red Lobster definitely more working class. Do we have any more of those? I don't know. I'm just thinking like cars. I don't really know. I really want to talk about the Golden Globes really bad. I watched a little bit of oh, it. Oh, did you watch oh, it? Let's talk yeah. about it. Okay. I'm not going to shit on any comedian. It's the hardest job in the world, making famous assholes laugh at themselves. It's impossible. But if you take the gig, you know that going in. Right. Uh, Eddie Eddie Brill, shout out Eddie Brill. Eddie Brill, uh, I've known for a while. He had an interesting take on his, he posted something, you know, and he's been doing it a long time. You know, he used to book Letterman and all that stuff. And he was like, yeah, it's really hard to ask a club comic to go in there and, and do that, you know, especially with 10 days to prep. Yeah, right. Um, it was a very uh, short turnaround. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was funny he, he said club comic because all the stuff that I didn't like about what he did was very club comic 
esque. Oh, like when it wasn't going well. Uh huh. He said, "I just got the." You know how when people are bombing, yeah. they'll yeah. start saying the shit they want to. Like, I just got the gig ten days ago. Yeah. And then he then he blamed the writers. He was like, "Yeah, the ones you didn't laugh at, I didn't even write." Like he was not. Oof. That was the only Oof. thing that I, I wouldn't have known it was going as bad. Right. And the media really blew it out of proportion. Right, because here's the thing. Those things never go well. No. They never go well. I can only think of, like, Ricky Gervais, and it just was went well because we all loved it. Right. They, The people in the room weren't loving it. Yeah. But because we all loved it, it's like Joe everyone's Coy, a If you watch the audience from Joe Coy and Ricky Gervais, Joe Coy's just doing just as well yeah. as yeah, 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 Gervais yeah, yeah. But he's that audience. Not, but he is not doing it in a way that's, like, balls to the wall. Right. So no one's going, I applaud Joe Coy right. for saying all the things. Um but I, 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 I was thinking that, like, oh, that is true. Like, that would be a move you would do if you're at the comedy store at midnight bombing. Yeah, start you shitting might, on the audience. You might start shitting. No, but They're I didn't not like shitting the, on the audience, but like, kind of like razzing. I'm them, better po- than this, po- or poking, even he, poking the audience a little bit to kind of, kind of. I just didn't like that he like threw his people under the bus. Well, that's crazy. I didn't, I didn't watch like any that of it. he brought up that it. he got the gig ten days ago. I just, I hate. Well, I hit a lot, but what I'm saying with this, I just didn't like that you got an amazing gig that probably will never be handed. I mean, Joe Coy's not a nobody. The guy has a fucking TV show. Dude moves tickets, bro. He and he sell. He could sell out the garden. Didn't he bro. sell the garden out? Something. He, he moves. So he moves a lot tickets. of tickets. He's not a nobody. No, it's not just some club comic. Yeah, this guy's. He is probably a top ten tour comedian in the nation right now here's the thing they didn't he's, just hand the job to some nobody he's, he's worse off now like because it seems like all it. the articles are now are calling, him bombing calling him a club comic yeah which is not it's not the case anybody would ever regard like call just like call him before this yeah so now he's being yeah. called no, a that's club a good comic. point yeah and then you got a good gig it may not be a gig that people want i mean i even in Eddie Brill's post, he said like, oh yeah, Ali Wong turned it down and Chris Rock turned it out. I didn't do any research on that, but let's just say that's true. I'm assuming mm-hmm. it is. Sure. But dude, that's a gig that like was made for you to to make or break. And I didn't think he took, unless they said he couldn't, as many chances. I mean, he it was a lose-lose. He could have really lit it on fire. But instead, when he started to get uncomfortable and he started to like, shit on his writers or make excuses and then they really leaned into all the people's faces i think that didn't help his cause that's all i'm saying well here's the other thing too is like when was the last time joe quit like does he really do clubs still like is he i think he pops he into the, the store, store, to, the store? but yeah. so does sebastian Menescalco. you wouldn't call him a club comic if no. he hosted the yeah. golden globes i mean he has a he has a tv show Right now, Joe Coy does, and so does Sebastian. I mean, yeah. I know there are different calibers of like what people may see, and Sebastian's been around longer, but they both appeal to a demo- a certain demographic. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. that's how they make their bones. That's how yeah. they make their money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought it was fascinating to see, like, because we're always talking, like, I'm always bitching on the show about the comedy industry because I'm not getting what I, what I want out of it, right? And I think of that stuff where you're like, dude, this is the job. <laughs> Yeah, right. This is the job. Yeah. And either lean into burning it down mm-hmm. or or just go with whatever is happening. Mm-hmm. It's like I just would rather someone pick. Like I, I had to bet. I mean, I don't like those shows anyways. I don't, they're not fun anymore no, to watch. They used to be a lot shows. of fun, but yeah. I feel like I even know since the pandemic. Well, that's another part of this. Joan Rivers penthouse here in New York City just sold for like 80 million or some crazy amount. Okay. All that money, I mean, she went bankrupt because of her husband and stuff, oh. and then got on because of the red carpet stuff. Oh, right. And her the and her fashion daughter. stuff. Yeah, that's right. So she made enough money in her lifetime, like in her 50s and 60s onward, to own an $80 million property in New York City. That's how lucrative she made that red carpet shit. Mm-hmm. They don't even have a red carpet show anymore. They had sold it. My wife loves red carpet. She's into fashion. Uh-huh. I spent 15 minutes last night trying to find the red carpet. Variety had purchased it and only solely put it on their like social. Oh. So that's how far wow. 
it's fallen off. Wow. Where the head of that operation Dude, that used could to huge. afford an eighty million dollar penthouse. Now, like they have like bloggers. But wait a second. Now, what about for the Oscars? Is it? Well, the I don't same? know. I don't. I don't. I don't know about that. The Oscars, they have to. But do Golden that Globes is the little brother of the Oscars. It's a big happened. deal. I was reading something else too, though. The Golden Globes kind of fucked up. They they were. They like, did something. That's they, why the ten day thing. They, they got they, sold or some kind of. Uh, I'm sure there yeah. is some discrepancy that mm-hmm. happened that made this. And all there was like no a advertising show. about Joe. Obviously, like, we yeah. didn't hear about it. But yeah, the yeah. thing is, is like. If that's where we're going, it's 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 showing, right? Like, oh, this is, we don't value this as a society anymore. These like fictional awards, fucking football, dude. Lab sports, that's it. That's all. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> that's it all that's really left. is. That's all that's left. Like, I may watch the Oscars, but I could only tell you like two movies that are being nominated. I, probably, I've never been. I've always been a little bit of a fucking film nerd. Uh, so, I love. I used to love the Oscars. So, like, when I was in film school and like uh, stuff like that, I, I kind of was like, "Fuck the Oscars!" I'm like, "Oh, oh really? Like, yeah." I was like independent films. Big movie guy, big <laughs> Oscar guy. I used to go see everything in the theater. I was definitely that guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, I and I, uh, I, I'm not. I'm not even saying that I'm still that person. But like, I have never gotten into the Oscars because of that, and then just well, you know what ruined all of this is social media. It ruined social media. And politics ruined all of this for me. And here, all right, I'll give you a take. Hold on, I'll give you a take. Yeah, I'd rather have all the dog videos I get on my phone, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I get such joy from the dog videos I have on my phone. Okay, but I'd much is, rather have it than the Oscars. But Are listen, you kidding me? Well, listen to this though. What I'm saying is, because uh, I've been going through like planning out uh, the project I'm doing and where it lives and trying to find what the genesis is for me. And the part for me that is missing from what's going on in the industry is that, you know, my dad used to want to go see really great movies mm-hmm. because there was no, and my, my, I, I bring my dad up because my dad is the most polarizing figure in my life. We're talking about a drug addict, an abuser, but super charming, can be very lovable at times. Like he is just this big hypocritical being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he liked movies and he wasn't, it. He, he threw bags at the airport. He wasn't a creative. He liked music and he liked, he just knew about stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I knew a lot of guys at the job, the used car job, the mechanic on this job. All these working class dudes went and saw movies. I'm talking about my grandfather would go and see Rickles in Vegas when he was in his 40s for a nice date for his wife. He would take her to Vegas. Like, n- art can no longer transcend those guys anymore, or even to the opposite end of the spectrum, due to. Like we've said this on the show before, I'm not gonna go see that woke shit. I'm not gonna go see that ignorant shit. Like there is such a level of what what political demographic uh, made this product. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if it's associated, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not gonna go. Yeah, right. So it it totally yeah, removes. Like, like, like there like is no melting com- pot. Comics get like called like conserve. Oh, he's a he's a red. State comic or what? Well, what are you talking about? But, and now we're in a <laughs> yeah. position as comedians. I mean, there certainly are people that that uh, lean do, in, do it for the. Uh, but that's now what I'm saying. It's like the only comics I'm seeing get noticed are either people starting fake conflicts, mm-hmm. or just flat out saying something they know for a fact is going to piss off as many people as possible, and then get some other people to jump on their bandwagon. I mean, there are people. I wouldn't say that's the majority, though. You don't think a lot of people. Okay, let's just look at just the people who are famous on social media that we know of that literally do videos to try to piss off woke people. But what, who's who's bigger right now? I mean, the one of the biggest comics there is right now is Nate Bargatze, and he doesn't he doesn't. Oh, he's like a really yeah. Well, Nate's a different entity, but he's one guy. I'm talking I mean, like okay. inner. But who else is big? Theo Vaughn. He doesn't. He just Ryan says, Long's big. Ryan Long. He does a lot of like stuff like that. Yeah, but I mean, I. But you're, well, you, well, like, what's our criteria for that? Like, I'm talking straight, just social. Like, they get, they got famous from the internet. Oh. They, they're not like crossover. Oh, like, okay. Theo Vaughn was in ro- like Road Rule. I don't know how much that. I, he's more famous as a comedian. I get that, but yeah. I'm talking like straight up. They got famous from working the internet. So, but whatever. But that's what I'm saying, though, is that okay. you can have if you know how to press that button, you don't necessarily have to mean it all the way. 
Do you know what I mean? Oh, sure. Like, there are some guys that only well, I think play. Ryan Long does that uh, spectacular. He works it really well. Like, oh. he knows how to press the button. His, his well, and it's. It's the um, it's the tongue in cheek. Yes, uh, it, which is so. Yeah, he just he just nails it like right. It's yeah. just he's great. But there are a lot it. of guys so who fun. aren't so fun, aren't as nuanced and good at it as he is. That sure. still have careers because they're punching, they're punching into that. Yeah, I guess. I'm I mean, saying that politics and social media, for me, have ruined the getting excited about the Oscars or any other kind of format where you get to have a discussion and a debate on why it, something should be best picture or why this actor yeah, should win bro, that. But hold on a second. There's always been, like, I mean, some of the best pictures that have won. They're uh, never movies I want to see twice. Dude, Rarely ever. Shakespeare is a, in Love. Like, some of I'm, those. I've never seen a best picture except for maybe one or two that I watch reoccur like reoccurring. So I understand, like, it's not about that. Right, love. It's more like, okay, why would this? I just feel like there's more of a conversation when you have different pockets of people involved in it, and I feel like now it's harder to have those conversations about art due to the separation of due to politics. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I I I still find myself in interesting conversations about art. So, I, like, I don't think it's. But you're also around a bunch of creatives all day. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. I'm that's my perspective. Everywhere. <laughs> I'm in fucking the office. I'm in. I'm in the, on the street here in Astoria. I'm. I'm around different types of people all day, and I used to be able to have those conversations 15 years ago with every one of those people in its own unique way. And now, it's that's not available. Okay. That's all what right. I'm saying. All right. All right. It's not available. All right. And I'm here to bridge that gap. <laughs> Uh, I realize now the, uh, yeah. the Lord has called upon me. <laughs> Josh Ricardo. <laughs> Fix this shit. I'm here to bridge that gap, ladies and gentlemen. Dude, I was thinking about a job thing. Uh, we, we, you know, we talk about different like elements of the job. Have you ever had like a job where you can do another job at the job? Yeah, I mean, I it's write the, a lot of jokes yeah, sitting at a desk. It's the best. It's the best, but like that's I, kind of a. I feel but like I I'm feel like that's a brain one. exercise. Do you ever, um, do you well, ever read about how you could, if, if you're like when I'm thinking, I'll scribble, and I'll just scribble, oh, I do scribble, a scribble, things. scribble. Yeah, I, have a, I have a whole. I'll uh, scribble, thing that I do. and then I'll get to what I. It it keeps the brain moving, uh -huh. so it keeps me more in tune with with the gig, regardless. So even if I am writing a joke on the side, I'm still very much. It keeps my brain there. Now, are you talking about like leaving the like? I remember I've had jobs in the past where I had a big audition, uh huh, and I'll just be like, I gotta take a shit real quick. Be, like, <laughs> Those are the best. Oh, I gotta yeah. run out to my car. <laughs> hey, where were you, man? Oh man, I got caught in this thing, and then this other thing. Like, I've done a lot of that. Where yeah. you, I'm trying to fucking figure out a way to get away from my desk so my boss doesn't see it. Yep. As long. Yep. Like, I'd rather it feel like 20. Like, how do I make this like hour you, and a half audition feel like 20 minutes? You send the email. You've been gone already. Yeah, 25 yeah, minutes, 20 minutes. trying to just figure like just, out. Just shaving time off of each side of it. Yeah. Like, where is this boss going to be yeah. at? Hey, what I, does his day look like? Hey, I'm grabbing. Like, like you're already like on your yeah, way yeah, back. Yeah, like, yeah. Hey, Might just, be a little late back from the... Because of this. Oh, man. <laughs> And it's like a twenty thousand dollar commercial, and you're like, "Please let me get this commercial," <laughs> or it's a five hundred dollar gig. You're like, "Please let me get this gig." Uh, dude, I had a, a thing where I used to when I well, we talked about this before. Like, uh, I cleaned a um, health club. I used to clean uh, the Living Well Lady, which was like a yeah, yeah. a ladies health. I club. I love that job. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, so many fucking wild times there. <laughs> but I would get paid per night, and sometimes I would just pay my friend. To do the work, I would oh, just pay, farm it out. I would just farm it out. Yeah, it was like, hey, I'm, I, I don't, I'm like, I, this is kill me. You want to, you want to like split this up? Like, what else would you be have to do? I would either because I was also busting tables at the time oh. too, so it was like, it was like kind of like getting like too much. Yeah, uh, and I would just start like farming it out, like subcontracting. Isn't that hilarious though that you could have a stranger? Using your key card. Oh, they were my boys. They were my bodies. No, 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 but a stranger to the the company. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> dude. 
I mean, that's all their shit there. They don't know this guy. They have access or, to the they didn't mall. hire him. They have access to the their mall. Their insurance yeah. doesn't cover him if no. he eats shit in there yeah, yeah. or something. Absolutely, yeah. And it was crazy. Access too, because... to the mall. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ed, uh, Cinnabon had some issues <laughs> on one of the nights you worked. I'm like, what? They claim a key card of yours was used. Hey, talk to Jimmy. <laughs> I mean, they had cameras, right? No, they didn't oh, have cameras dude, back so then. So you could get away with yeah. so much. Dude, we used to hang out in the mall. We Just to, no one around? We used to go take our skateboards out into the mall and uh, fucking ride around in the middle of the night. Yeah, it was awesome, dude. Wild. It was awesome. The 90s are a yeah. whole nother era now. It's good fucking Technology time. really made the 90s feel like it was the 30s. That's yeah. how long ago it feels like yeah. because of technology. Like, we were watching Office Space over the weekends. Bro, it probably was. Wait a second. Then 30s to the 90s was 60 years. Yeah. What's the 90s to now? 30 years? Yeah, I'm talking more about the technology doubles yeah. that feeling. Yeah, yeah right. And you're yeah, talking yeah. about an era where no cameras were available yeah. in a mall. Yeah. A mall yeah. with tons of goods yeah. to be stolen, and they don't have any surveillance beyond a well, guard who gets off. The mall would have. You couldn't go into. But they that's what I'm saying. That's that all they down. felt they needed yeah. back then. All you needed was a great. Now that comes you down. got. You could build. A, uh, there's cameras everywhere now. Dude. There's no place where you can get away with any of that. Nah. My wife and I were watching Office Space, which is one of our favorite movies. Love. And when he gets the money, right, and he wants to give it back, and he just walks into the office during off hours, and he slips under a door and thinks, like, that's going to save <laughs> him from getting work. caught. And then the place burns down, and the guy, like, takes the check. Like, okay, well, yeah. a camera would have, no matter what, picked up the de- – like, I mean – It's great. Yeah, it was it only was, in the '90s could he do that. It was such a great time. There was no like phones. I just felt like there was less monitoring, yeah. and you could. It's not necessarily about getting away with anything, but it's like you can do some mischief without having to worry about the ultimate consequence. Yeah, now I mean, people like skateboarding the... is a little bit of damage, a little bit yeah. of property damage. No harm, no foul. No. Somebody might not even notice it. The uh, but yeah, like here's the thing. It's like that was, and I think that's why people complain about freedom and shit like that now because you 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 were like not too long ago, mm-hmm. nobody knew where the fuck you were. You didn't. There was no cell phone. Yeah. Like you didn't. You could just be. Yeah. You could. Just you disappear. were gone. You were gone. Yeah. You could just disappear. Yeah. Yeah. I miss those days. Yeah, man. I feel like I would love to just disappear. <laughs> I'm like disappearing right now. <laughs> I'd <know> Houdini <laughs> my ass right out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking bill collectors can suck my wake. Uh, I'm Josh Ricardo, and you can follow me at Josh Ricardo and go to joshricardo.com. Uh, you can follow me uh, on Instagram at edmcgowancomedy. Uh, check out edmcgowan.com. See my show dates. Uh, email us, workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. We will see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at workingclassholes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in working class holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on. 